Come on, load faster. Hey there, folks, and welcome back to Star Citizen. There has been an update. They have released the dogfighting module, or better known as Arena Commander. And yes, it is a little bit buggy, but it's still in pre-alpha, and we're going to take a look. One of the first things you'll notice, or at least that I noticed, is I have a lot more ships than I actually have. We're going to take a look at that in a little bit. But the one thing that you want to take note of is you now have a helmet, and just equip the helmet, and that's how you fly the ship, essentially. Without putting on the helmet, you can't fly the ship. And let's take a look. So we have right here, there's a regular Aurora. And the reason they give you these ships is because in the flight module right now, you can only fly three ships. You can fly this version of the Aurora, that version of the 300i, and the Hornet over there. And because I own an Aurora, they gave me an Aurora. Because I own a 325A, they gave me a 300I. And because I own a Drake Interplanetary Caterpillar, they gave me the Hornet. So I actually have all the ships you can fly in the game at the moment. So that's pretty cool. Another thing you'll notice is they've changed the look of the 300I. I, I don't know, it, it looks alright. Doesn't really look much better in my opinion. However, on the inside, the inside's a big change, and it looks really good. Well, I sh shouldn't call it a big change. The layout's still the same, but it looks a lot cooler on the inside. I think the textures and details are a lot better than they were before. So, instead of having this uh, leather JPEG here, they have a nice texture here. And, well, pretty good textures all around. Um, we're actually going to go fly these ships in a little bit. I have both, well I have both mouth and, mouse and keyboard, the controller setup, and a um, joystick. So I don't have a HOTAS setup, but uh, I'm not that. I'm a filthy casual. I don't have a HOTAS. And here they also changed the uh, cockpit for the Hornet. The Hornet looks a little bit cooler too. So we're going to take a look at that. We are going to fly everything in the well, we're going to fly each of these ships, and we're going to try out each of the controllers to see which works best. And as you can see, a little bit of a glitch there. His leg is currently sitting in a console that can't be comfortable. And because I have my helmet on, we have this screen. So we can go to Drone Sim. Spectrum Match is if you were an early subscriber to the... Well, not an earliest subscriber, but an early backer of Star Citizen. You can get into Spectrum Match. Unfortunately, I wasn't. I backed it somewhere around October of last year. And I don't have access to that yet. But first, we're going to fly around in the Aurora. And we're going to take a look at all the controls and all the fun stuff involved with that. Still, the animations are awesome, as always. Alright, let's uh, run on over here. We're going to fly, probably we're going to fly the Aurora in the just free flight mode. We're probably going to fly the 300i in uh, free flight mode. And we're going to probably take the uh, Hornet to the what, we, what they call the Vandal Swarm mode, which is just an AI assault. Essentially, you have to take on a whole bunch of enemies with your wingmen, so we'll do that. All right, hop in here, and as you can see, some of the stuff isn't finished, like the heads-up displays aren't finished and that sort of thing. But it still isn't pre-alpha, and I'm sure they rushed to get this out. All right. So when we go to drone sim. We have both Dying Star and Broken Moon. So we're going to play the Aurora just in regular Broken Moon. We have Free Flight and Vandal Swarm. So we'll do this one in uh, Broken Moon, Free Flight. And we'll, we will be trying the mouse and keyboard. So let's uh, give it a shot. Welcome to Roberts Space Industries. Enjoy the ride. System check. Alright, and as you can see, this is, if you've ever played War Thunder, it's a lot like War Thunder, except there's a little bit of dead space in the middle where you move your mouse, and that's because the guns auto-point 
for a little bit, for a certain distance, I suppose you could call it. And W and S speed you up and down. Q and E, I believe they up and, well, W, S is actually forward and backwards, I'm sorry. A and D are pitch, and then your mouse is just wherever you want to go, essentially. And it, it is kind of a sluggish control because there's this dead space in the center where your mouse doesn't do anything. However, if you're actually shooting at something, that can be nice because of the gimbling guns. And if we press F1, F2, and F3, it gives you the different heads-up displays that you have. Right now we're just looking at the, the guns, and right now we have the bearing mark 3A lasers. And as you can as you shoot, you see the energy goes down. And if you continue firing, the energy <coughs> runs out. And eventually your uh, your power planter will overheat and take damage if you keep on doing this. So. And if we go to the F2, more look at your guns. And you also see that we have missiles. Unfortunately, we don't have anything to fire them at. And we also have this, which is our damage indicator. Right now we haven't taken any damage yet. Um, honestly, I don't think that this game plays very well with mouse and keyboard. Your best bet is probably with a joystick or a controller. In fact, I'm actually going to switch to a controller or a joyst joystick right now because I have a joystick with me. So I'm going to move this to the center of the screen and going to test it out. Yep, there we go. And for your joystick, you have your pretty much all your normal controls. Right now, what I'm using is an Extreme Pro uh, 3D Logitech. So it's, uh, I don't know, a fairly standard one. You can get it pretty much anywhere. It's a cheap old one, but it works. So, And you have a, I think it's much more finesse with how you handle your ship when you use a joysticks. So you can't gimbal your guns. Though, so that's something you have to take into account. And you also can fly in Newtonian mode. That would be the caps lock button turns that on. And you can actually get a couple different views of the ship. Turn off the engines and you can see we slow down. Or if we turn on the Newtonian mode, we can turn down our engines and can just fly backwards or whatever if a ship was chasing us. And as you see, there's no heads-up display when you're in third person. I suppose that's fair enough. One thing I would like is a customization for button setup, but they don't have that yet. Soon enough, I'm sure. Flare away. Yeah, and you can shoot flares if people are shooting missiles at you, so... I think you have a limited Flare supply of them. Away. So, yep, that's this ship. Eh, we can crash it into something. Why not? Turn the Newtonian mode off. We'll have some fun. Crash it into an asteroid, assuming that's in our vicinity. Warning. You are approaching simulation. Yeah, there's a simulation boundary. I suppose it's... I mean, some people have been complaining about the simulation boundary. I, I suppose that... Uh, it actually makes sense because you're technically in a game, in a game if that makes any sense, because the arena commander is supposed to be a simulation that takes place inside of Sarsis. So, yeah, whatever. And we also have a boost. And obviously the more boost en engines and guns you use, the more your core will overheat, so gotta watch out for that. And yes, you can take damage and crash. Weapons system. Damage. Well, let's see what happened, yeah. I think we broke off our guns. <laughs> Do we still have any power? Yeah, we still got power. Yeah, we still have one of our guns. Yeah. So, they do have damage states and stuff in here too, which is pretty cool. Impact. Impact? If you say so. <laughs> oh god. And, as you can see, flying off into space. Impact. Damage states are pretty cool on this. I think the damage states for the Hornet are probably 
the best implemented Impact. so far. And we're dead. So that is the Aurora. So we'll take a look at the 300i in just a little bit. All right, for this next one, I'm actually going to be using an Xbox 360 controller. So we're going to see how that works. So from what I heard, the controller is a pretty good way to fly the ship as well. So we're going to find out. Now we got to get out of here, and yeah, there's a little bit of uh, clipping through the walls, but uh, what can you expect? It's still in alpha. Nope. And door doesn't want to open. Come on, open for me. Or yeah, that that works too, I guess. Teleporting through doors is okay in my book. <clears throat> Maybe. All right. Now let's uh, run on over here. Come on. Run, please. Nope, he doesn't want to run. Oh, yeah, you can run. Never mind. And we'll open that up. Get in here and we'll fly the 300i. This essentially has the same weapon setup as, well, not the exact same weapon setup, but a very similar weapon setup to the 325A, so I'm sure it will fly very similar. The 325A, I believe, has a better power plant and shield generator, and the Class 2 gun in the nose is a little bit different, too. Alright, we'll do a drone sim. This time we will do it on dying star and we'll save the best for last the uh, the vanduul swarm with the hornet so see you guys in a bit works at your service core system operational all right and first thing you'll notice is you can look around with the the right joystick which is very nice uh, you can't really do that with at least my joystick setup or with the mouse and keyboard setup so that is one big bonus to the uh, the control setup with the controller let's see here and the right bumper makes it go forward and you light up on the right bumper and makes it stop the right trigger shoots your outside guns and it looks like the left bumper is reverse. Unfortunately, I don't think is there a a what, what do you want to call it? A roll? I don't believe there's a roll set up in this. Nope. Yeah, I might actually be using the control or the uh, not the controller, but the joystick for flying at least for the time being until we can customize our setup. And it looks like the X button is what shoots your secondary. So it's a very unwieldy setup at the moment. It'd be really nice to be able to customize this. So I'm actually going to go back to flying with the joystick for the time being. Alright. Ah, that's better. And take a little bit of a look outside the ship. And inside the ship too. Isn't that fancy? Let's see. For some reason, we're not moving. What happened to our ship? Is it a bug? Well, maybe we are moving just very slowly. Flare launched. Let's uh, switch back to the first person. There we go. Are we moving? No, we're not moving. Interesting. Well. That's a little bug that I guess they have to fix, so I'm gonna fix the bug myself and we'll be back in a little bit. Your service. Core system operational. You know what I said about free flight mode? Yeah, we're gonna do some vandal swarm instead. It just seems more fun. 
And we are still in the 300i, so we're going to test out the 300i, I guess. And looks like we've got some Vandal Scavengers, which are the lowest level ships. Or at least adversaries, I guess you could call them. we have some fun with them, I guess. There's no target lead indicator, which is, I suppose, fair enough. And I probably won't last. Because this is uh, one of the first times I've actually tried this in the match. Oh god. We're good. Get this guy. Get him. Yeah, the... Maybe most aim would actually be pretty good because you can your gun when they hit them. A little bit easier. I'm going to give that a shot right now. Oh, do, 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 do. oh god. Maybe not. Alert. Systems overheating. Yep. Okay. This this is a bit of a mess. Alert. Um, we're going we're gonna to try the Hornet. Alright. So see you guys back in a bit. We're going to do the Vandal Swarm with the Hornet. Maybe we'll get a little bit of better luck. All systems online. Alright, we're playing Vandal Swarm in the Hornet on the Broken Moon map. So, let's give this one a shot. The Hornet handles a little bit differently than the 300i. It's a little bit more sluggish and actually it's easier to control. I still would like a little bit more advanced control options for us, but I'm sure that's coming. It seems like RSI likes to focus on the visual aesthetic, not the gameplay, which isn't necessarily a good thing, but we'll see. I'm sure they'll fix it. This is just the very, very first release, and the only, like, second day that it's been released, so I'm not too terribly concerned. Let's go get this guy. We'll go until we die, or until we kill someone. A little bit tricky because y if you move the throttle too much or the the joystick too much, it just spins out of control. So shields charging. Well, somebody killed a target. Good job, wingman. Doing a lot better than I can do. Hey, there you go. You saw that I hit him and the shields were activated. Let's see. Up took a couple of hits there, and yep, that likes to happen a lot. You know, the servers are kind of overloaded at the moment, so I'm not really surprised. Shields, 25%. That's not Alert. good. Port shields, down. Warning. You are approaching simulation boundary. Collision. Ow. Oh, well, there we go. Shields, charging. And, uh, well, let's see what happens. Do I magically respawn? I don't know. Am, am I dead? Stand by for yep, I'm dead. So, there you go, that's the very, very, very first impressions of the dogfighting module. So, I guess you could say it looks really nice, doesn't play very well yet, but I'm sure they're going to work on it. And future patches will come, so we will see. Alright, thank you folks for watching. I will see you guys Anvil next time. Aerospace. All systems online.